The Vice Minister of Health was on the island visiting today. The Vice Minister agenda began today with a meeting with the Interim Governor, the Secretariat of Health in the Department, together with members of the Secretariat of Health, Regional Manager of EPA Sanitas and Nueva EPS, as well as the staff and managers of the Departmental Hospital. Revisamos la situación de prestación. De we reviewed the hospital's performance situation and how it has been evolving and working during this first year since the creation of the state social enterprise. We see a growing level of performance and also financial stability. The Vice Minister pointed out that the same visit would be made to the municipality of Old Providence. Es Mañana vamos a Providencia. That is correct. Tomorrow we are going to the island of Old Providence on the instruction of the President of the Republic and the Ministry of Health, who have been very attentive to the construction of the Providence Hospital, which is a commitment of this government, and we are also going to supervise and see firsthand the transfer of the field hospital to the spa, which is now fully adequate as a transitory hospital. During the Vice Minister's day, we also visit the health center in the San Luis sector, which is in the process of construction and expansion. This news agency would keep abreast of the process made on the island of Providence. The International Court of Justice in The Hague has announced that the court's decision on Colombia and its dispute with Nicaragua over the alleged violation of sovereign rights and maritime space in the Caribbean Sea will be announced on April 21st. This April 21st, the International Court of Justice will decide based on the follow-up given to the dispute between Colombia and Nicaragua over maritime space in the Caribbean Sea and the lawsuit filed by the Central American country against Colombia for apparently not respecting and complying with the judgment issued by the 2012 Hague ruling. Kent Francis, a RISA leader who actively participated in the hearings held in September and October of last year defending the RISA territory, stated the following. 21st of September coming, the court in The Hague will deliver a decision on the case in which Nicaragua is clear that Colombia had disobeyed the ruling that they made of November of 2012. So we expect that they make a decision in favor of Colombia and also in the counterclaims that we made for the fishermen and the African American Providence and Kathleen and that they um, as the people that have been inhabiting this area. The court has also announced that due to the pandemic issues, only members of the court and representatives of each party involved will be able to present in the courtroom. However, members of the diplomatic corps, the media, and the general public will be able to follow the April 21st session through a live recording that will be broadcast on the court's website. The Secretary of Planning held a meeting to with officials from different departments of the governor's office, where they are explaining the way in which the review and adjustments of the territorial planning articles will be conducted. The auditorium of the Chamber of Commerce was held today the process of review and adjustment of the territorial planning ordinance, where it was established a constant and clear communication, so transparency, accurate data, inclusion, and technologies will be the tools. Development. Therefore, it is more worthy that during the meeting held with officials from different departments of the administration, all for a new beginning and related entities, the way in which this project will be developed and was explained. Today, we begin the process of reviewing and adjusting the territorial planning ordinance for the island of San Andres, a very important process for the department for the island. In process we are here with the officials of the governor's office initially creating our support team to start with the implementation of this on the island. Therefore it is very important to mention that it is a process in which we must all participate. For the Secretariat of Planning it is important to keep in mind that this is a limited territory. Therefore it is necessary to have a development 
map that allows the community to evolve without affecting the resources, space, and quality of life. Hence, the importance of the community's participation in the different roundtables and meetings that will be held. The invitation is for you to be attentive to the different town hall meetings that we're going to have in each neighborhood, in each area, with the members of the productive sector, with the community, with the community action board with all the population, the students, the youth. We want you to be a fundamental part of this process. This is for you because in the end, we want to leave something that is good for your development that will allow you to live better. Another important point of this part is the current capacity, proliferation of neighborhoods that do not meet the condition of habitability and development of the island's economy. The part is aimed at the use of the island's land for the next three terms of government. Ministry of National Education together with the Secretariat of Education invites all non-official early education providers to profile the service they provide in the islands in a conference to be held tomorrow. Secretariat of Education to plan international foundation and in agreement with the Ministry of National Education will conduct tomorrow, April 1st, a profiling workshop aimed at education service providers and non-official establishments that educate children from 0 to 3 years old in San Andres. The purpose of this is to identify the educational service they provide and at the same time make the registration to the RUPAI platform. The RUPAI is the registration private providers of early education, all persons and institutions that are providing services to children under three years of age who are attending no matter where in school or kindergarten who have not registered before, they're invited or if they are already registered, they are also invited to make the profiling process. They can come to the Ludoteca Naves Chill at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Between 2 and 4 o'clock we will be attending them to carry out the process. The Ministry of Education has specified that it is a requirement that all establishments providing early education services for children from 0 to 3 years of age must complete the single registry of private early education service providers. And a petition to the Human Rights Committee has been issued by Elizabeth Japan to follow up the reconstruction powers of full providence. Through the Human Rights Committee of Representatives, Congresswoman Elizabeth J. Pan has announced that she made a request to hold a regular session on the island of Providence through the control and oversight of the reconstruction process. It is important that we go back to the municipality of Providence to monitor how this development has been, to see if everything that was said would be carried out in the reconstruction has really been fulfilled. How are the materials that are being used? Because there are several complaints from the inhabitants to see if our houses are built, especially those of stratum 0, 1, and 2, to see if the people are already in decent housing or if they are still in tents. What will happen to the hospital? If the construction is about to begin, how is the design going to be? How is the drinking water problem going to be solved? Since people are still reporting that it is in a critical situation, how is the development of this economic activation? The idea is to know what is happening in Providence and how people are managing, not only in terms of housing, but also emotionally and psychologically. The ideal thing is to follow up on the commitments that the national government must fulfill with the people of Providence. The host of the music program was injured with construction materials that were being transported by vehicle, and which were not known. Fortunately, the injury was not serious. After leaving work and heading home on a motorcycle, Yasret Castillo was surprised by a vehicle coming in the opposite direction with construction materials such as PVC which apparently were not fastened down to the vehicle and ended up causing a blow to the woman's face, which fortunately was not of great magnitude. Well, Tuesday evening around 6 o'clock, I left out from the channel where I work, Tele Islas, and went home from so to not around six o'clock uh, before I get land Barrio Los Corales, uh, a car will come in with two tubes, two PVC cubes. And uh, the breeze and the movement of the car made the, 
the two tubes then turn. So I get fizzy when in the turn, so I carried on the speed and try um, esquivar la joda said in Spanish. And what hit me on my face was the like the last part of the tube. I get fit stop and two person when coming behind me notice that the car never never stop and never notice that uh, I won't get hit. After the injuries caused to her face, she had to be taken to the clinic where she received medical attention. It has become frequent to see vehicles carrying construction materials on the island's roads without any adequate signaling for their transit. Castillo calls on the competent authorities to take action before a serious accident occurs. We have to be more secure. Uh, be more uh, like attentive to when uno de load up and how the way uno drive and care all them here things. Uh, always have somebody behind it and also to call the attention to, to the entities. Fortunately, this incident did not escalate and Castillo is recovering from her injuries. Powering local food is the main objective of the Breadfruit 2021 Our Food Fair. The secretary invites the community to attend and purchase the products that will be marketed there. From 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., this important activity will take place at the farmer's market in the Rockwood sector. Traders, hoteliers, restaurants, shopkeepers, and the community in general are invited. A space where they will be able to find seasonal products, typical gastronomy, cultural exhibits, entrepreneurship, and service offerings. We invite hoteliers, traders, and other guarantors of food security in our department to join us on April 1st. We are going to have different products from our department in the farmer's market. Market. We want you to support us. We want the entire private sector to support our farmers. Let's remember that at this place, the island's culture will be highlighted in all the presentations. The main objective is to exalt local food and products. And at this time, we present the indicators of the COVID-19 situation in the department. Today, March 31st, the Ministry of Health reported one case of COVID-19 which means that the islands maintained the 10,184 cases since the pandemic began. According to data from the Health Secretariat at local level, there is one active case, 9,997 people recovered, 154 deaths, and ICU occupancy is at 0%. And now we continue with Victor Fusal, Banal, the sport news of our department. <laughs> the best sports of the islands. A great representation of our heroes of the country in the Exportiva Triathlon Tournament that was held here in San Andres. On behalf of the Military Sport Federation of the League of Military Forces, these athletes, despite their disability, are still our homeland heroes. They put their soul into sports. They are an example of our society, always strong, persistent, and with great discipline, showing love for their country. And this time they did it in San Andres. In this triathlon showing great courage, Teleisla Sports spoke with the captain Juan Pablo Giraldo, who told us. I come here on behalf of the Military Sports Federation of the Military Forces Disability Sports League. And today, I am here on behalf of all those heroes who have been wounded in the conflict. It is a unique experience. It is indescribable what one feels, the adrenaline, the drive, the courage. That is part of the representation of the Colombian soldier. We are here representing each one of them. In spite of our disability, we continue forward. We also spoke with the psychologist, Angela Rubriche. At the moment, we are doing psychological accompaniment to the athletes of the armed forces of the Paralympic League. There are eight athletes. All of them are heroes wounded in combat after military forces and national police. The event in San Andres is spectacular. The city is wonderful. The organization is great. Everything is very cool for them. These athletes are preparing for several years for different events. Today we are in the paratriathlon team and they are preparing for different national events and we have been working with them in a very long process now. An example for our society are these heroes who put their soul into sports. And on the other side, coaches maintain their continued struggle in football for the welfare of the young people of the archipelago. 
Forming talent and fighting for the benefit of the youth of the Insular Department, the coaches continue their tireless fight for an integral sporting formation to keep them away from drugs and violence. One of these coaches who dedicate himself with a lot of passion is Anthony Rada, who told us. Ha sido un tiempo difícil a raíz de la pandemia. It has been a difficult time due to the pandemic of the things that have been presented. But we continue to fight and try for the children because we see the space or the door to get them out of the life that exists today with the violence, the fight, the lack of tolerance, the drug trafficking and addiction that today is flooding the island and so we fight every day against this. Our main goal is to play soccer, but this has to be accompanied by integral teaching of values, manners, civility, and many other things. How to behave in a hotel, how to manage in a concentration. Then we go there and we think that as coaches and monitors, we can contribute, but this comes from home. That is why with the support of the parents, which I think is the main school, we go there giving our best. Definitely the main purpose of the coaches is to teach soccer. But equally important is the dedication and integral formation of the young people of the Insular Department. What a great job of these coaches. This will be all in sports for tonight. We will see you on another broadcast. We continue with Lisa.